Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always. And today I wanted to bring you guys a tutorial on how to start up your MI-24P NATO codename Hind F attack helicopter. Now this isn't going to be our normal kind of startup tutorial where we just go through the very basic steps of how to get the aircraft started up and ready to taxi and take off, or in this case hover and take off, but we're actually going to go through and take a look at some of the bottlenecks that I have identified when trying to learn how to start up this helicopter. As you guys know from my previous video on my first impressions of the MI-24, you saw that I'm very new to helicopters. I've definitely dabbled in them a little bit, but they're still very new to me. The systems behind how they work are still very new to me. And as a result of my teaching myself how to fly the MI-24 and how to start this beast up, I have identified three different bottlenecks or failure points that you may encounter in your startup procedure of your hind helicopter. Because there's a lot of you guys out there that are brand new to helicopters just like me, I figured you guys could really appreciate a tutorial video on the startup of the MI-24 that goes over how to troubleshoot the failure points of this very complex startup procedure. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the office and get started with this uh, startup tutorial. Alrighty guys, welcome back to the office of the MI-24P Hind F. And we're here at an airbase in central Syria called Shirat. We've flown a Russian general here from Latakia to meet with his Syrian counterparts on how to plan an offensive against the rebels, as well as come up with an idea of how to deal with all these NATO jets that keep incurring into Syrian airspace. So let's go ahead and get started up with this startup procedure in which we're going to identify and talk about the three bottlenecks slash failure points that I see in the startup procedure of this helicopter. And of course, how to deal with them. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit the backspace key to get rid of the seat, the cyclic and the collective in order to see the panels around the helicopter a little bit easier. We're first going to come down to our DC AC power panel and we're going to turn on our left and right batteries along with the two inverters. So that way we can convert our DC power from our batteries to AC power to allow our systems and avionics to use them. We're then gonna pull the two levers to throw the large banks of circuit breakers on either side of the pilot seat. We now have Bichin Babushka yelling at us. So we'll turn her off by hitting the off button a couple times. There's a few different auditory warnings that come on when you first bring on the batteries and all of the circuit breakers online, so you may need to press the off button a couple times in order to silence her. Next thing we need to do before we start up the APU is we need to turn on all of the fuel valves. For the feed tanks, the various fuel pumps, we don't have any external tanks loaded so we will not hit the external tank switch. And so that way, once we have green lights up here and we have all of these red lights turned off, we know that we are ready to start the APU with all of our fuel pumps running. So we can come down to the APU start and engine start panel down here by our left hip and we can press the start button. We know it's good to go when we see a green light here. We can see that the temperature of our APU is rising, and we'll see that the air pressure that's used to start our two turbines is gonna start rising as well. Once we have two green lights down below the actual start light, we know that we are actually ready to start our two engines. Now at this point, we're gonna reach our first bottleneck slash failure point that I've identified in the startup procedure of this aircraft. That can be very frustrating if you're coming to helicopters from fixed wing. And that is the rotor brake right here. This brake prevents the rotor from turning and thus prevents the actual turbines from starting up. So if you do not hit the rotor brake to turn it off and you press the start button for your engines, nothing will happen. Sometimes you get a little flicker of a green light down below here, but as we press that, we can see that nothing is happening. However, if we turn the rotor brake to the off position, it's almost like an emergency handbrake like you would find in a car, you can then press the turbine start button no problem.
And then let's say you're talking to your gunner through the ICS over SRS and he's distracted you and you've forgotten to turn off the fuel cutoff valves. You see that your RPM for your engine has risen, but it's now stuck and is now going to start falling because you did not quickly press on the fuel cutoff to allow fuel to flow to that turbine to continue the starter procedure. Very similarly as to how you would say hit uh, shift and home in order to bring a throttle to the idle detent in say your FA-18C Hornet. So in order to troubleshoot this, all we got to do is just hit the stop starter button right there. We will see our RPM fall back down to zero very, very quickly, and we can just start the engine once again. Now that that RPM has fallen back down, we'll go ahead and try this once again. We'll hit the start button and we'll make sure that we turn off the fuel cutoff. You know you've done it correctly when you hear the turbines have a very loud start to their, to their life. We can then see the RPM really start to come up a lot, lot faster. And it will continue to come up and stabilize at about 60 to 50% RPM. Once these lights are no longer on, we can then start up the right-hand engine. Let's go ahead and close our door so that way it doesn't get too loud on us. Now things are definitely starting to feel a lot, lot better. Next, we'll go ahead and throw this switch down here to the right-hand position, and we will start the right-hand engine and make sure that we hit that fuel cutoff valve right away. So that way we can introduce fuel to the engine right away and get the engine start procedure to continue on until the RPM stabilizes. And I had said 60% earlier, I meant to say around 75%. We now have both engines stabilized at 75%, and now we can go ahead and hit the backspace key once again to bring back our, our collective and push the twist all the way to the forward position to bring the engines up to 100% RPM. Once you push the twist, grip all the way to 100% RPM. As we can see, the RPM of the turbines itself will jump to about 95 and then come back down to stabilize at about 90% RPM or just below, maybe around 88 if we look at this very carefully. Now this is important because we can see that the rotor RPM is now at 95% RPM. And we can see that the needle is squarely between these two yellow lines right here as well as the engine RPM is between these two yellow lines right here on these RPM gauges. This is important because if you find yourself in a situation where your avionics power will not come online, you know that it's because your RPM for your main rotor is not at a certain point where it will start to generate electricity from the generators. It's important to note that the generators derive their motion and their electrical generation capability from the rotation of the main rotor and not the rotation of the fan blades or any other mechanical pieces in the turbines themselves. This can be a little bit confusing and cause some issues when you're trying to say, turn on your autopilot before you're ready to actually take off. So next we'll come down here, we'll turn on some more light as well as we'll turn on our, our, our intercom systems, 
all of our navigational systems, our gyroscopic stabilization systems, and all of that good stuff. We'll then come down to our power panel once again, and we will turn on our two generators, make sure that our transformers, the 115 volt and 36 volt, are on the main power position. Keep in mind that these are three-way switches and need to get a right-hand click in order to bring them to the main position out of the off and down, which is standby position. We're then gonna turn on the two rectifiers and ensure that these lights are no longer illuminated. And at this point, with all of these turned on, as well as our main rotor RPM up inside of the green between the two yellow lines, we are then able to go ahead and make sure that we have all of our avionics power turned on. At this point, you can see that our autopilot channels can now turn on. Before, if we had the main rotor RPM below the two yellow lines, your things like your autopilot channels will not turn on, as well as things like your gun sight, your weapon systems, all of that good stuff will not turn on as well. Next, in order to make sure that the autopilot is going to work properly, we need to uncage our gyros by pressing these two buttons on either side of the gyro vertical switch one and two. This will take away the standby flags from our ADI, our backup ADI, and any other gyroscopically powered instruments that are in the cockpit. At this point, I always like to turn on my sight, so that way I have a good fixed point in order to use as a reference as I'm taking off or trying to hover here. So at this point, we now have a very healthy hind helicopter ready to take off. As you guys could see, we identified and troubleshooted three different uh, bottlenecks or failure points in the startup procedure that seems to be getting to a lot of people, including myself, as I was first learning how to start up this helicopter. To recap those, the first one is, of course, the rotor brake. The engines will not start up down here if our rotor brake is turned on. The second is making sure you throw the fuel cutoff valves right away in order to keep the engine startup continuing on to stabilize the RPM at about 85%, as well as to make sure that you have your main rotor RPM up inside the green arc between the two uh, yellow arrows in order to make sure that you get full avionics power generated from your two generators down here. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. For me, finding and actually getting to a point where I could troubleshoot these three bottlenecks really helped me figure out exactly how to start up this helicopter reliably every single time. Now the good thing about this is you don't have to re-slot every time you make a mistake. With this helicopter, it's very, very easy to actually rectify the issue that you had and then fix it and continue on with your startup procedure so that way you can take off on time with your buddies in a multiplayer server or make sure you don't fall behind in your single player missions or campaigns. So I hope you guys liked the video and I hope it helps you out. So uh, please give it a like and a subscribe and please let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Um, I really enjoy learning about the systems behind these aircraft in DCS World and thus learning how to troubleshoot things when things go wrong rather than necessarily actually just learning it simply by pressing one button followed by another followed by another to get the outcome that we want. So again, please fly safe out there, guys, and stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.